Hi friends, it's Candy here. Welcome to my channel. I hope all of you have had a wonderful new year so far. And today I want to discuss with you my January paycheck number one budget. So let's jump right in. As you can see here, I have my trusty composition notebook as always. And this is my budget for January of 2021. And so to start off, let's go over how I set up my budget. So first I pencil it in and then I put my total debt here. This is my debt snowball payments. This is when my payments are due. This is paycheck one, which is what we're going to be going over today. And we normally get this paycheck on the 30th of each month, sometimes the 31st. Um, as you can see here, this is when all my bills are due and these are the bills that I pay. So let's go ahead and go over these first. So my paycheck for this first pay period is $2,070.66. This is down from last month. Um, I believe last month it was more like 2,080 some odd dollars. So, and the reason this has gone down is due to our healthcare insurance going up. It seems to go up every year by, you know, 20 or 30 bucks a month. So we shall see how it goes this year. Um, anyway, this is one reason why it's important to create a unique budget because you never know what's going to go up or down from month to month or paycheck to paycheck. So on 1-1, one, one, my home um, bill is due. That's $556.55. On 1-1 one, one also due is payment two of two for my Citibank card. So, this will pay this total amount off. I owed $904.11. I think this was a bit more last month, but I think because I returned some items, it took that off the total balance. And so, this time for the second payment to pay this off, I only owed $444.05. On 1-5, my power bill became due, and... I paid $108.85, and this bill is up from last month by about, I want to say, three or four bucks. Right here on 1-7, this is where my student loan comes due. Um, this is not the payment that I'm currently debt snowballing. It's at zero right now, and that's due to administrative forbearance. Now, guys, I think this is going to expire at the end of this month on the 31st, so I probably will owe something on in February. So, but we shall see. You never know what's going to happen between now and then, so we shall see, right? 110, this is when my water bill is due, and we must have used some more water this month because it's up a bit at $30.75. I think it's only up like maybe some change um, because I believe it was 29 maybe last month. So, you know, it's only up a little bit. So no big whoop. Um, 113 is, I'm um, sorry, this is my um, eraser <laughs> marks or shreds that you get from erasing the pencil marks that I made before. TW stands for total wireless. This is our cell phone bill. And this is for two lines for me and my husband at $59.07. I highly recommend total wireless and I'll leave them linked below if you're interested in lowering your cell phone bill. Um, on 114, typically due is my husband's student loan. It is also at zero right now, and it is also on administrative forbearance until the end of this month. This is Skylar. This is my car. This is my current debt snowball. I paid $662. This is payment one of two. So a win for last year. 
was that I paid my husband's car off last year. So super excited about that. And so now I'm snowballing that payment as well as some extra money that we have each month into my car. And so I'm able to pay this much now for a grand total of $1,324 each month toward my car. And we'll get to that in just a moment up there at the top. Now, right here is my allowance that I withdraw each um, two weeks um, because we get paid every two weeks. And I withdraw this in cash and I get 40 bucks in cash and my husband gets 40 bucks in cash. Now, you may ask, do I pay my kids an allowance? I have two children, uh, one seven-year-old and one ten-year-old. And yes, I do pay them allowance for doing their chores, for good behavior, and for doing well in school. So those are the three conditions for them getting paid their allowance, you know. It's it's kind of like a I guess a bargaining tool whenever they're not up to par in a certain area. I can be like, well, you know, we need to improve here or you, you know, you won't get your reward, basically. Um so that's what I do. I withdraw my allowance in cash. I used to withdraw the kids' allowance in cash as well. But they're prone to wanting to spend their um, allowance on Robux, which is the, I guess, the monetary, um, what they use for buying things in the game Roblox. So I usually have to charge theirs on my credit card because for some reason it won't take a straight up debit card um, for that transaction. So I usually end up having to charge theirs. And so that's what we do. And that's how we roll here. So um, let me know in the comments below if you pay your children an allowance or if you give yourself an allowance each month. Um, I think that's an important part because when we used to not give ourselves an allowance, we would end up overspending anyway. Or my husband would make a transaction and I would question him. I'd be like, why'd you do that? Why'd you make this transaction? It's messing up my whole budget. So I think it's important for you and your spouse to at least sit down and say, hey, how are we going to have some fun money for ourselves that we don't question? We don't have to get in fights about, you know, I don't question what he does with this money and he doesn't question what I do with my allowance. Just as long as I spend any superfluous expenses for me with my allowance money, we don't question it, you know? So that's been, because that used to be a bone of contention with us. So, and now, I mean, it's been great just implementing this one thing into our budget. I mean, even if it's just 20 bucks a piece, even if it's just 10 bucks a piece, you know? I mean, if you're that strapped right now, just a little something where you're not having to question each other about wh wh where is this money going and, you know, or you never feeling like you can have something for yourself. This, I believe, is one of the line items in our budget that is so important <laughs> for, you know, just the, the, the mental health of budgeting, <laughs> I guess you could say, because... Sometimes you're just going at it and you're paying and you're paying and you're trying to get it done and you're just barreling through and you're gazelle intense, as Dave Ramsey says. But then at the end of the day, you didn't give any of that money for yourself just to have a little bit of fun with, you know. To me, this is like, you know, just a mental health buffer even to get you through the next round of just being gazelle intense, so to speak. Okay, with that said, let's move on to our gas budget. So this is the gas for our cars. Um, this isn't a utility type gas. So this is the gas for our cars. And we pay roundabout 40 bucks every two weeks to put gas in our cars. Um, and so we've been pretty consistent with this. I don't usually go over this. Um, sometimes I actually go under this, so that's really good. Groceries is at $340, and I think I've been undershooting this lately. I'm going to keep it the same. I mean, 
I think this is a little high. I mean, we are a family of four and most, um, I guess budgeting or financial gurus will tell you only spend a hundred bucks per person in your household per month. So since we're a family of four over a month's time, we should only spend $400 total on groceries. As it stands, this puts us at 680 bucks a month for groceries. And I also understand that per a lot of budgeting gurus, groceries and food is where a lot of people overspend. So I may have to revisit this at some point this year, um, maybe this month, maybe next month, and start tracking my groceries a little bit closer and see if I can actually cut this budget a little bit. But so stay tuned. I will probably do that here in the near future, and we will see if I can slash this grocery budget. All right, with that said, let's go on to the next thing. BB for me stands for budget buffer. Some people call it a cushion. Um, and this is for our main checking account. Um, this was the budget buffer for the month. This is $257.54, which is quite a lot considering Christmas just happened. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And that may be um, because I undershot a lot of these other areas. Like, I mean, allowance stayed the same, but I may have undershot on gas and not had to fill up as much and possibly groceries because when you're eating with families um, over the holidays and all you're required to bring is like a, just a, a dessert or a, you know, if it's potluck style, I think, you know, I probably didn't spend maybe as much on groceries here. So maybe that's part of the reason for that. But like I said, I plan to track that in the future. And so hopefully, you know, I'll get some clarity around my grocery budget. And if that did indeed make an impact on the budget buffer for the month. Um, so there's that. And this is for my main checking account. Now, Slush Fund is a completely separate checking account. Slush Fund is is whenever I've paid all these bills, my allowance, gas, and groceries out of my main checking account here, then whatever's left, I send it on to the slush fund. And so what was left in the slush fund um, prior to us getting paid was $58.21. Um, but I had to take out $23.06 because when I added all this up, all of these line items, and then I took it out of this, I was this much short, $23.06, um, in order to pay all my bills and do this right here. So I was really grateful to have some money left over in the slush fund, so when I withdrew that money, to supplement this up here, I was left with $35.21 in the slush fund. So still in the positive, and which is totally awesome. Okay, coming down here to savings, it started out at $8,088. Um, I usually drop the change and I round up or down depending. And so I subtracted 80 bucks. This was for Christmas gifts. And so now we're left at $8,008. So important dates. And 1-4, my daughter is returning to school today. So that's the only important date I have down here. Um, there may be some that I'm missing right here. I believe I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, which I didn't necessarily write down. Um, I have it down, you know, in my personal calendar on my phone. Um, but to me, important dates is like things you, you know, you really need to keep track of and, you know, I got to get my kid back to school, you know, on time and everything. So holiday breaks over kids. Um, so with that said, let's go back up to here and see how we're doing on my debt snowball. Okay. So starting out this first paycheck, we still owed $9,024.26 on Skylar. And then after I made this payment of $662, 
We are now down in the 8,000 range, people. So on paycheck one, she is now down to $8,362. And that's amazing, guys. I'm really excited. We are just plugging away. And so if I project this out, I should definitely have her paid off by September of 2021. And so that's one of my financial goals is to get my car paid off by September, or at least by the end of the year, if something should come up and I can't necessarily just barrel through and pay her down like I have been, I at least want to get her paid off this year. So total debt, we started out with $38,241. And after making this, um, like I said, this debt snowball payment on Skylar, we are down to a total debt of $37,579, which is so great. And another win for 2020 is that I started out with a total debt of, I believe, like, gosh, I don't even know, guys. I think it was forty five or 46000 Anyway, I use Undebted to track my total um, snowball and how it's going and my total debt payments. And so, um, before I made this last payment, Undebted told me that I had paid off 27% of my total debt. So, I believe I went from forty five or 46000 total debt... And now we're down to, you know, 37, dollars $5,579. And so still plugging away, guys. I mean, my projected stats are that I should have all my debt paid off by July of 2023. And hopefully we can keep on track with that and keep on trucking. But for now, my main goal is to get my car paid off. So friends, that's all for my paycheck one in January budget. Now, let me know in the comments below what your wins were for 2020 and what your goals are for this year. So let me know in the comments below what yours are. My goals are to get my car paid off and I guess to track my grocery budget a little bit better. Um, you know, I want to get that down too. And of course, there are some other bills that I have during the month that I'd like to see if I can get those a little bit lower so that I can save a little bit more and, you know, maybe stay on track with that debt snowball, you know, because, you know, things do come up. Murphy does visit. And on that note, I know Murphy's going to visit us because my husband's having some more teeth repair done. Um, one of his teeth broke over the holidays, and so I'm anticipating another dental bill and a pretty big one because I think he's going to have to have a crown. So anyway, guys, I hope that you had a wonderful holiday. I hope you're having a very happy new year so far. And as always, friends, take care. I'll see you next time.